Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the Dragon Concord's actual play. I am your third storyteller in the series. Um, my name is Ron Power. Uh, I will be taking you through a new adventure. Um, but let's just go around the room and introduce our players. Let's leave a little bit of mystery and not introduce our characters right away. Just give your give your name and like what systems you run and that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm Mike Bernal. I'm one of the storytellers here at Dragon's Concord. I run primarily uh, 5e, but I've been running Eat the Reich recently, uh, which is the uh, the uh, Havoc engine. Um, and I have run Dread. I run Fate Core. And I'm looking to start up uh, Pathfinder 2e and uh, Marvel Multiverse soon. I'm Nicholas Yost. I'm one of the storytellers here, and I can't leave. They <laughs> won't let me. <laughs> but aside from that, I run uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Star Wars FFG system, uh, Traveler, all of these other different systems. You can find it on my bio page on Dragons Concord. Uh, typically run, you know, very, very humorful games. Got to have fun in it. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> we have a trespasser in our <laughs> Hi, I'm Nathaniel Guzman. I'm the newest storyteller here at the Dragon's Concord. Yay! Uh, thank you. I, uh, I started with D&D 5e, and I run it almost religiously at this point. Uh, I have run Traveler, Star Wars FFG, a um, couple of other systems, starting to get into Genesis. But uh, I'm excited to be here, and thank you all for having me. Yeah. I'm Chris Bungie. Um, I run a lot of 5e, uh, Genesis, um, World of Darkness, bunch of other stuff. Um, I run the Halotide podcast, and typically in horror stuff. There you go. All right, if you guys have more questions, you can always find us on dragonsconcord.com. Um, all right, so we are kicking off a brand new story arc here with all new characters. Um, so welcome my, to... My, I'm just playing Hosk yes. with a mustache. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where the little... fuck am I? <laughs> it's really cold. <laughs> we'll throw back cameo for those of you who watched the first first half. And you should absolutely roll that. Yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Alright, so welcome to Pregus, the city of Spires. Uh, the capital city of the uh, Holy Confederacy of Pregia. Um, it is a very... Um, uh, advanced land full of magic and probably the most advanced in far, as far as technology uh, in the, um, the world that we live in as well. Um, it is north of the lands of Urgis and uh, Zarthinch, which, um, you know, if you're a Mishdorian, there's some of those lands that we've visited in the past uh, in, our, in our actual place. Um, and it is ruled over by an imperator, a, a sort of god emperor uh, of uh, holy, holy religious leader, but it also shares a great deal of power with a uh, ar with uh, arcane casters, wizards. Uh, they have a magic college in the city of Pregus um, uh, that is uh, uh, dominates the landscape in the city. Uh, it's got eight towers, e eight spires for each of the various college, colleges of magic, uh, one for each college. And uh, they, they are 200 foot tall giant spires that sort of dominate the landscape of the city, dominate the skyline. Um, and so super phallic, yeah. like oh, crazy, phallic. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And uh, it begins. They are, <laughs> it does. It does begin. And uh, so they obviously are trying to show uh, a great deal of their power as well. But we begin at a slightly uh, lower stakes than in this uh, great college of magic. Um, instead, we begin um, in a uh, at dawn as as the sun begins to set. Um, a lone dragonborn figure wanders down the street after a very late night uh, of uh, wrapping up a investigation that he's been running. Uh, he's very tired. Very, uh, he just wants a drink. So he goes into his favorite tavern uh, uh, called um, uh, Finn's uh, uh, Place. Finn's Place, we'll say. And um, sitting at the bar 
is the tavern keeper Phineas, uh, who recognizes this dragonborn figure and says, uh, "Ah, yeah, I guess I, I'll get the usual for you, my friend." Thank you. And so, uh, describe what your character looks like as he sidles up to the bar. So, this dragonborn is a red chromatic dragonborn, um, tall. Although not tall for a dragonborn, only standing at around 6'6". Six, six. Um, he is old, definitely uh, within his own age. Um, the There are occasional scales across his body, um, which appear to be bleaching just from old age. Typically around the roots, the, the color is definitely fading away into a, um, like a chitinous, um, like beige. Um, constant just look of tiredness. Uh, he is very well armed um, for a for a person just walking around the streets. Looks like a traveler, like someone who has definitely gone around and adventured quite a bit. Um, but yeah, he saddles up to the bar, places down, um, some silver. Uh, uh, the, the eel, correct? Is that, is that what you usually get? Yes, please. Yeah, that's what I thought. Kind of early for you today, isn't it? I guess, is it early or is it late? Uh, it's late. Yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, I guess the sun just started to rise, but for you, it's, it looks like you could use a rest, my friend. Yeah, we'll see how, um, persuasive this, uh, ale can be. Yeah, fair enough. Thank you. <sighs> well... You know, I uh, don't mean to bother you if you just want a drink, but uh, you heard the talk of the town here recently? No, I haven't. I've been uh, on the outskirts recently. Yeah. Um, well, it seems like there's been another murder out in uh, North Bend. <sighs> no offense. Yeah, another, another a decapitation, too. The head totally missing. It's a real nightmare. What they found was a blood bucket. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You said it was up in North Bend? Yeah, North Bend, you know. Yeah. Just a pretty rough town, that rough area of town, of course, but, uh, and, you know, people losing their heads. Uh, <laughs> How many does know. this make? Uh, this, is, this is the third one. Hmm. You know, a couple weeks apart, but... It still. doesn't seem like the town guard can uh, find their own head shoved so far up their own ass. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if we wait for the guard to solve all our problems, so, well, just forget it. But, uh, yeah, I did hate to pile on another issue. Just thought you might want to know in case you're heading out that way anytime soon. Um, well, I'm just wrapping up tonight. And, uh, I mean, I, I can take a look. They might have sent me something. I can go and investigate. Yeah, maybe so. Uh, that's right. You're a, you're a detective, right? Uh, detective is, um, too official. I am... Um, <laughs> A concerned citizen mm, okay. who has a lot more legal levity. Also referred to as a dick. Private <laughs> <laughs> dick. <laughs> well, I'll leave you to, to it, my friend. Thank but uh, let me know if you need anything else. And he goes back to sort of like wiping up the bar, getting ready for the day, uh, setting up some some uh, some table some table for the the breakfast crowd. Really, just looking around the bar. Usuals? Uh, it's pretty empty at the moment, actually. And uh, you know that probably if you head back to the office, you'll run into your two uh, accompl accomplices, your, uh, your companions that uh, you do business with. All right, I finished the drink in one fell swoop. Actually, how fell is this swoop? Yeah, let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do a con? So yeah, I'm going to for me. I'll just do a con. This is going to set the tone for the whole thing. This is the first <laughs> roll of the whole thing, yeah. For drinking. So, oh my exactly. God. 19. Okay. You uh, yeah, you knock it back, and it's uh, just a little, little like, you know, hair of the dog. You're going to make sure that you keep going for the rest of the day. Because lot not likely to get any, any sleep anytime soon, unfortunately. Rub my eyes. Yeah. You know what I heard is great for staying awake? Alcohol. Alcohol. <laughs> Get up and go off to the office. Okay. So, speaking of the office, let's uh, have a little discussion here real quick amongst you three. Uh, um, oh, I'm currently <laughs> trashing his office. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> We're going to leave you out of the okay. discussion for the moment. <laughs> but amongst you three, uh, I want you guys to um, 
Your office is small. It is actually just a basically it's a uh, it's a overly large storage room in another business. Uh, I want you guys, however, to create the business for me in which your office is located, and then give me a little. Each of you contribute, but give me a description of what it's like in your detective agency slash office, basically. Hot. It's very warm in this room. <laughs> yes. Also sexy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a disco ball, mood light, smooth jazz. I said these three. You're out of this. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make it sexy when I get up to all this time. <laughs> My character would exactly be a part of their investigatory business. You need money. Not really. <laughs> you good? <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud. How are you going to afford your orangutans? You don't have some money. I don't have orangutans in this I do have three retainers, though. Can they be monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I might, I might be looking into their services on this day, though. I don't know if I'd exactly be part of the business, however. Oh, okay. So you're saying you you don't feel like you're a, a, a member of this uh, investigative unit yet? No. Yes. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. So we'll just have two partners at the moment. That's fine. Um, I'm uh, probably, like... Kind of like a, a junior partner, I usually have uh, more. Uh, I was probably brought on as a, initially as a contractor, so my desk is like uh, a recent addition. It's a little bit smaller, uh, uh, and uh, there's like a little um, what looks to be like almost like a, a normal humanoid size, like goblin suit of armor that is is there, um, and uh, I am just. Uh, looking through the windows out at like it's like in like this like crowded alley that's like mostly like disreputable shops uh some just like quick food stalls and stuff like that so there's like a lot of like spices and like uh garlic and onion in the air just like all the time and like I'm always like at the window, just like looking at, at, at stuff that's going by, just trying to figure out like what I want for lunch, or if there's any uh, interesting people around that I could maybe entice into the shop. Uh, like a cat. Oh, yeah, it could be a Are cat. You, have you tried dating cat, cat, cat string? Or something? <laughs> uh, maybe. Uh, or I could just be like, "Hey, you look like you're a troubled individual that's in need of uh, some investigatory services, perhaps." Uh, yeah, or, or like, hey, perhaps you, you look like your wife is cheating on you all the time, perhaps. <laughs> you look like you got unfinished business. How many times you punch in the face? A lot. A lot. I'm not a very... I'm not a, I'm not a very... That's uh, why the suit of armor is like, socially gifted person. No, no. That actually might be why I'm in there, because he's You're punching me. him in the face? No, he saw me passing by, and he told me, you need something. Hey, money bags, you look like you got a lot on your mind. Perhaps you and your uh, three friends could come in here and... Uh, Discuss your business with us. Um, yeah, there's like, I think there's like boxes like everywhere. Yeah, yeah. and just like random sheafs of paper or scrolls like lying about. Mm. Um, it's very disorganized, but you guys know where everything is. Definitely yeah, that's right. Uh, next to the the suit of armor looking thing is also just like a, what a, what to most would look like a pile of garbage. <laughs> That I like, I will occasionally like walk over to and like piece a couple of things together, and then just be like, eh, maybe later. <laughs> later. <laughs> There's definitely a bed under the desk for me. Nice. That's yeah. Perfect. It is. A bed under your desk. There is. It is. Uh, not used. Very often. Yeah. And your character's name, uh, Nick, is Elohim. Is that correct? Elohim. 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 Elfheim's quest for a full night's sleep. Yeah. <laughs> That's what this is about. There's also, yeah. Yeah, I, I imagine the thing, there's a drawer that pulls out of his chest that it's like a little bed in it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so you got the one big bed under the desk and, and then a drawer for, uh, and how do you say your character's name? Uh, like, Scrimp. 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 Macrappa. <laughs> That's a good name right there. <laughs> Okay. It's a family. That's just uh, name. Who's his class a and respectability right there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Never met a script I couldn't trust. <laughs> 
All right, so Elaheim, as you want, wander through the actual, what, what, is the, what is the business that you're walking through to get to your office? It is a, so the business, so we're on the second floor of yep. three stories. Perfect. The business above us has recently gone out of business for a, a, sm- a spice smuggling deal, yeah. which is a little disreputable that an investigatory service was directly <laughs> underneath it. I thought you were about to say smut peddling. I'm, like, I'm, gonna, I'm also into that. <laughs> but the, the bottom floor, of this business walking through it is this like it's like a weavers uh store they it looks like they're making just like very poor clothing mass produced um very hot all the time a lot of steam in the air as they're they're constantly um is there a lot of sweating going on in this shop there's a lot of there's a lot of sweat in this shop <laughs> bit of a spitz right there <laughs> And there's like these uh, various tiered buckets of dye in them that are constantly mm-hmm. leaking, so the floor is permanently stained with like <laughs> oranges and reds and purples and greens. You have to walk through a, a series of like pallets that have been put down on the floor so your your shoes don't get stained. Nice. And it's run OSHA by is just OSHA's gonna have a word with all these buckets. <laughs> <laughs> it's run by a group of group of halflings. <laughs> <laughs> Like a like a family of them, or can you tell even? It like is a like, family that yeah. has burrowed down. Nice. What is the correct <laughs> term for pluralization for halflings? Is it a quorum of halflings? I'm gonna say quorum. There you go. Is it a foley? <laughs> a foley of halflings. <laughs> a shiring. Shire. Yeah. Shire of halflings. I, was just left, I left here five minutes. A shire got set up. God fucking damn it. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> would you like potatoes? We've invented purple onions. Oh, God. Okay, yes, I would like, I would like potatoes. Fishing them out of the dye buckets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you wander through the uh, through the weaver's uh, dye shop and then up to your second floor uh, little, little covey. And I head inside, and Scrimp is sitting there, um, tinkering away, I will admit. Yeah. The yeah. door is yeah. always, it's either an up and shove, yeah, or yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. down, pull, and then shove. And uh, when you do that this time around, a little um, envelope was kind of stuck in the door, and Scrimp didn't notice it, and the letter falls down to the floor as you kind of open up the door. Take um, it. If you'd like to, here, you can read this aloud <clears throat> when you're ready to uh, take it off. You know, read oh. I didn't notice that. Welcome back, Al. Hey, how you doing, Scrum? Good, good. What's this? Uh, uh. Investigator Hearthkeeper, I would like to retain your services. I should think 500 gold crowns would suffice. Please correct me if I am mistaken. If you and your associates are willing to help me, please find your way to the Jewel Theater before High Sun, where we may discuss the case. I can provide half payment now as a retainer. Regards, Lady Askarin. Do I recognize that name? Uh, make a history check. Ho, ho, ho. 250 gold. Well, it's a very good service. It's a very good um, payment. Especially since we're low on... We could eat outside of the alley tonight. Yes, we could afford it. Uh, yeah, what was your history? Uh, 12. 12. Um, name sounds familiar... But uh, you can't quite place it, unfortunately. Hmm. Um, yeah. Have any vid- visitors come in? Oh, yeah. And I, like, point over <laughs> to, like, <laughs> these four gentlemen just, like, sitting in, like, these yep. uncomfortable chairs. <laughs> so why don't you describe your character uh, and your retainers if you'd like to give them some personality. Sure. Uh, no, I am um, sitting on this uncomfortable fold-out chair. Uh, but I am somehow making it still It is look, made of garbage. <laughs> I am still making it look decently regal. Uh, I am wearing a full-length cape that wraps around my entire body, more like a cloak, except it looks like it's made out of this uh, kind of nice silk uh, as I have it completely wrapped around me. My head is this giant insectile head with these uh, clicking mandibles over and over again, very like... Um, Almost like a mixture between an ant and a uh, uh, like a grasshopper, prey mantis, or more, or, yeah, okay, more like a prey mantis. Mm-hmm. These big yellow eyes, these giant like fluffy antenna that kind of click back and forth, 
and um, I am simply sitting there and also have a helmet with a uh, blue gem in the center of it that wraps around the top going around my eyes and just covering the carapace but my entire little body is covered by this cloak. My retainers are all people in very uh, foreign dress they are all just smiling, looking happily. One's like kind of trying to look at the magazine pile next to the chairs. Um, they are human along with one more uh, goblinoid looking individual or a uh, hobgoblin. But um, you're just happily, quietly sitting there waiting to be addressed. Oh. Um, and I should mention, by the way, Pregus is very cosmopolitan when it comes to like the cities. It's uh, not too odd to see monstrous kind of uh, people walking around goblins, hobgoblins. I am Although a three cream like your character would be is probably you, you stand out even amongst uh, you know um, the monstrous kind of like looking uh, species in this land. Uh, but three cream, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's also a place where people don't kind of bat an eyebrow when they see something unusual because you, unusual can be the norm in a, in a way in this, uh, in this town. Um if, uh, so, uh, yeah, you're sitting there um, patiently waiting for... Uh, Let me read that all out. Wake up. Oh. oh I'm sorry. Um, how can I help you? Um, I probably looked to one of my retainers first, who um, addresses you. We were told to come here since we were so curious. Oh. Um... Okay. Um, I mean, look at him. He probably have money. That's what I'm saying. You probably help him out some way. We have exactly 600 gold. Oh. Well. That's, that's more than the lady offered us. <laughs> Introductions. I'm Investigator Elheim Hardkeeper. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I say to the retainer and then look over at the insect. Um, you will feel a presence against your mind as if asking for permission to speak. I don't think I would. I think I'm in such a mental state where I don't actually put up any defenses for that. <laughs> um, it, it's a uh, voice that talks to you in your head, but you see the mandibles are like quietly clicking to themselves as there is a voice. Uh, that's not eerie at all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to haunt my nightmares at all. Greetings. I am Pop Hop Brawl. I have been sent to this with these lands to learn and unfortunately the gate guards seem to have grown tiresome of me and my companions and told us to bother you well <laughs> sorry it's been a while um well welcome um are you looking for any assistance? I, you know, you're curious. Is there anything that you need help with? Is there anything that... Um, this, we're an investigatory service. Uh, we, we, we handle with um, like crimes and that sort of thing. And, and investigating people and following people and making sure that um, information is up to date. Um, are you just looking for just information? I am currently looking for an audience. An audience? Probably taking the one in the taffins. You mean an audience as in um, you're looking to speak with higher echelon people? Yes. Oh. Uh, how about this? A job just came to my desk. Um, and uh, the per one of the people who is um, who is uh, gave me this job uh, is part of high society. If you help me with this job, perhaps they can get you a um, an introduction. I look at the other three retainers, and there is no word spoken between us. There's all three, four of us, just staring at each other for a solid two minutes. <laughs> this is like the. The, uh, what was yeah, that was so creepy. I'm sorry, I didn't realize it. You know, I don't, I don't know if like people have like a psychic look about them. It's, it, it's indecipherable. I think maybe if they just don't have 
you know, like humanoid mouths. Maybe I just don't tell them to come in anymore. That's fine. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> racist. <laughs> racist. <laughs> it's more of a com- it's a more of a personal comfort thing. I just can't, it's just, I can't deal with things picking through my mind. Listen, Scree, if you want to make your way up into into high payments, you gotta have people poking your brain. I guess so. I mean, like... It's my, not the first problem you've had. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's just that my dad's real old-fashioned, so I grew up in a real, you know, like a real, like, closed-minded house. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Me and my kid not in agreement. Excellent. Um, they have also requested, if you would like, they may clean your office. Oh, it's clean. They would also like fun. Yeah, right? I, 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 if, I, you're, if you're going out. to find anything if you all started moving things, so... The little information dump. This is the poorer section of town. If we start cleaning, we will remove structural integrity. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Uh, this ain't no North Bend. Yeah, worried. It is much like a poorly built hive. Sure. Yeah, I, I could see that. There's some burrowing going on in the first floor. We so. definitely have an infestation. <laughs> oh, yeah, a, for a sure. Half <laughs> Hi-ho. Hi-ho. Well, make yourself comfortable. Can I get you anything to eat? If you are offering. Well, we have... Uh, <laughs> like, immediately start going into one of the drawers. No, uh, no, the other three are just making themselves comfortable. Like, just going, finding seats, padding, that sort of thing. Uh, uh, goes out to find Funyuns. <laughs> <laughs> we could send a... Uh, we could ask one of the one of the halflings from downstairs to go fetch us something from, from outside the... the um, oh, no, I got it, I got it. Um, and, like, I look at the, the pile of garbage, and I, like, Gorgeous. I'm like... <laughs> Like, Mach 1, go out and get some kebabs, please. And then, like, some of the garbage, like, kind of, like, starts piecing together <laughs> to, like, a, like, kind of, like, a like a two-foot-tall, like, goblinoid-type uh, construct. Is it, like, kind of, like, rotating into place? Yeah, yeah. So it's, like, like, it seemed like a pile, but now it's, like, yeah. kind of forming into, like, a roughly humanoid shape. Like the most little, little red transformer yeah. you've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You can see little like arcane tendrils like pulling mm-hmm. it together into places and That's then like just cool. like like sockets like kinda like snap into place and it just like kinda just like uh walks over to me, I give it like a couple of silver and then it just like walks out of the I give it a gold coin. Okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Gold how many nice funions one. would that buy? <laughs> that curiosity. In funions, how much is a gold coin? Well if I'm not getting into that right now. <laughs> Four whole Funyuns. <laughs> so, uh, just as a little bit of reference here, I do have a map of the uh, city up for the players, at least. Uh, awesome. So, you guys, um, in the big circle in the middle, of course, is the uh, Imperator's uh, Palace, uh, also known as the Hagia Cretora. If you really, if you zoom in really a lot, you can see me mugging a guy over here. Yeah, <laughs> stab, 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 <laughs> exactly. Kick, running. Uh, <laughs> so just to the south uh, east of that uh, palace is the agora, which is the marketplace, basically. Uh, I imagine that y'all, your um, uh, office, uh, your that where you make business, is somewhere to the north uh, east of that. Uh, that's getting into the poorer part of town and is not very far from North Bend, which is the neighborhood that was mentioned earlier. <coughs> um, North Bend is a little bit more of the red light district, uh, the place where uh, called the uh, students of the Collegium, uh, uh, Collegium Magi uh, go to uh, let off some steam, have a good time uh, when they're not in their studies, uh, as well as just other you know, more working class folk uh, or people who are just trying to slum it. Uh, they'll go there to the taverns, inns, ale houses, that kind of thing, um, to uh, to sort of let loose. Um, you're kind of in the more residential, poor part of town, so just a little bit to the to the east of North Bend, um, but still in that kind of like kind of slumish area uh, of of produce. Gotcha. Yeah. I walk over to my desk, and uh, there's this one crooked cabinet. That is like, it's never easy to open. So I take it, turn the handle, pull it out and slam it in. Yep. And the wall will fold out into a series of different shelves. 
that have all of these different documents that are stacked up and there's this uh the current there's a bunch of labels was like current case past cases the past cases are a decently high um uh, list there's a bunch of these different knickknacks and books uh there is a longbow that is hanging up on the um the highest bookshelf that has um looks poorly constructed but it looks uh sentimental um and i take my current cases and say can you burn this yeah and i like walk over to my desk and i have like a little like one of those like lighters that you keep on your desk like yeah. it's like a half paper half lighter and it's like <laughs> and then like i like it's starting to get up and i open up like the suit of armor and i just throw it in there <laughs> perfect yeah it turns out miss Mar- marguerite was um not forthcoming with their information on the her nightly advances. Uh, okay. Regardless, we got paid. Um, there's been. Have you heard anything about these uh, new string of murders happening? The beheadings. The beheadings, yes. Yeah, but like, I mean, this is a, that's a little bit more dangerous than we usually get involved with. The thing is, it might pay well. There's another one that happened at North Bend. Oh. This makes it third. So. You think the college boys are getting a little too rowdy up there? Beheading people? I mean, you know, they got necromancers. That's that's a that's a school. Yeah. I it, it doesn't fit the. Mo- I'm t- talking about. Yeah, Pocket just watching you guys <laughs> speak about this. Just the head tilting slightly and more and more as like, oh yeah, they're probably just you know kids will be kids at school. I'm like. <laughs> Oh no no! This well, is I'm still, very, I'm still very much disturbed <laughs> about it. I'm just identity. saying. I'm just saying. Like these these kids, like they make a lot of money. They think they're oh. above the law. Do you read Common? I do. I give you a small book. It is a plain uh, book that just says uh, uh, Pragya on it, and it's a book of the city. Thank you. Now, <laughs> he just takes it. It's like a silver. Um. I don't think it's college kids. Beheadings? That's that's personal. Yeah. I know a guy. I'm, I'm not here. <laughs> I'm in the closet. Hearing, Ignore me! I keep hearing this voice <laughs> coming down from the alleyway. Ignore me! <laughs> Other people prone to thoughts of violence. Yeah. Uh, well, do you ever have... Uh, do you have cities where you're from? Like huge cities? Yes. Do you ever have issues where people are stacked on top of one another and eventually someone at the bottom crumples and then murders their whole family and tries to get away with it? No. Well, you come from a very nice place. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I mean, I'm not saying it's like a regular thing, but it is a possible thing for sure. Three beheadings within the span of a month is a... uh, It is noticeable. Was it perhaps arcane in nature? We don't know. We haven't got paid from the town, but... Uh, we need to be making our way out. High sun is coming in. Actually, wait. No, we have a couple hours. Okay. You want to take a nap a little bit? Uh, not a nap. I just need to sit down. And I slump Would in my like chair. Would you like some more milk? Just, <laughs> <laughs> just full yeah. unconscious. It's one of those things you were fine until you actually stopped. And at that moment, it just all hits, you know? Uh, I was in, like, a couple of minutes later. Yeah. Uh, Mark 1 comes back in with, like, a couple of, like, kebabs and stuff. And I... Just like hand out like the little uh, wrapped uh, kebabs. For... The humanoids take them and eat them normally. It yeah. smells amazing. Like it's got mm. the spiced meat smell. Is just like fills up the office. Um, it's probably seeping into the other uh, into the dye shop as well. Um, in fact, uh, so does um, what's your what's your automaton? Does your automaton have a name? Yeah, it's it's just Mark Two. Mark Two. Yeah. Does Mark Two speak to you with a voice, or is he just like words and clicks, or how does he communicate? Uh, yeah, it's mostly words and clicks. Like he's, okay. it's not like a, a full sapient being. Okay. So, um, as that like, uh, so like as you guys are starting to eat, he's just kind of like. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's definitely uh, it's good. I mean, you know, thank you for getting it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I like give him like a scrap of it. And he tries to like insert it into like the little opening you put for like like just to aesthetically create a mouth <laughs> for yeah. that. And it just, but there's no actual like digestive tract. And he's like, 
That's the saddest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> soon, soon, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get better. You know, I have, have your own I time. have a mouth, but I cannot <laughs> feed. Cutest <laughs> <laughs> like, little you existential crisis. <laughs> I like, I like, kind of tear it up in like smaller pieces. It's just like <laughs> for, put it in this stuff. I don't, I hope this doesn't gum up stuff later. <laughs> I'll fix it later. <laughs> It'll be fine. And so he kind of like plops down his, his like, uh, like kind of like how a little kid would just sort of like plop down on his butt, you know? Yeah. And so his legs just oh, yeah, okay, actually, out. Yeah, so yeah, the large oh. one, the larger one mm-hmm. is Mark II. Okay. That, he's Mark I. Mark I. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Right. <clears throat> but he's just kind of happily sitting there now. Mm-hmm. I've only just met Mark One, but if anything happens to him, I'll kill everyone in this room and myself. <laughs> that's my. That's, pre- that's pretty much my goal in every campaign: is to create <laughs> someone that everyone wants to protect at all costs. Yeah. <laughs> Fifteen okay, minutes later, <laughs> Elaheim wakes up. Yeah. I'll just take this text and I'll just burn them, put them in Mark Two again. Thank you, handsome and honorable Grobby. Oh, yes. Uh, you can call me Scrimp. Scrimp. Yeah. Very well. He's still unconscious. Yeah, yeah, we'll give him a couple minutes. He's just got to rest his eyes a little bit. It's been a long night for him. You know, he's... I mean, this is uh, a testament to what a good investigator he is. He'll stay out the entire night, exhausting his whole body just to make sure that the case gets done, you know, against his own health. It is respectable that he tries to surpass his biological weakness. (laughs) (laughs) Did you see the time knife there real quick, man? (laughs) Open up a cabinet and take out some very nice liquor. The bottle is almost empty. And they just pour out a cap full. Nice. <laughs> Energy juice, good to go. Put it back in. Ready Close to go, it. boss? Yeah. Let's, make, let's start making headway. Mr. Pock, uh, please feel free to accompany us. Stand up like an '80s movie villain with the silk. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Looks like a sci-fi '80s movie villain because it wraps around completely and it barely moves when I walk. I like open up my pack and I'm like, "Mach one, come on!" <laughs> he like <laughs> crawls into the pack and then just like disassembles into oh, like another you. pile of garbage. <laughs> and then I'm like, "Mach two, come on!" And then like the the larger thing just like, <laughs> just like starts walking behind. Me. That's great. I take the longbow. Sling it over, and I, with one fell swoop, close all the shelves. That's awesome. On the back of Mark II, you can see, like, these little grips. And I just, like, swing up onto them, like, Hero and, like, Big Hero 6 onto, like, (laughs) Baymax. Nice. Yeah. And then we just, like, keep going on. Take our way. We gotta walk. (laughs) Yep. All right, so you guys head uh, down through the, uh, down through the the weavers, uh, out onto the street, um, as you come out, the sun is blinding, especially for you, because uh, you had been in this sort of darkened environment uh, for the last hour or so. Um, I stumble out of the hallway yeah. like a drunk. <laughs> uh, the sounds, but even more than the blinding light of the sun, uh, the sounds of the street are just like deafening. Uh, already, even though it's just, you know, uh, even though we're still two hours or so from high sun. Uh, the um, the streets are just full of like like the agora is just right over there so everybody's just piling into the marketplace uh, vast numbers of people doing like the regular business trying to set up trading uh, the, the negotiations the bar- bartering the haggling that goes on there is insane and so people are already starting to, to like do their daily business uh, you know the crowds are starting to assemble they're yelling at each other they're negotiating they're doing you know it's all manner of, um, of crazy sort of uh, Yes. Is there any hat stalls? Any I'm sorry, what? Hat stalls? Hat stalls. Okay, sorry. I was like, hot sauce? <laughs> <laughs> you want hot sauce for your for your uh, diary? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me try <some> Cholula. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yes. If you go into the agora, there's so many clothiers. There's just like um, a lot of silks are, are being traded here. But there's um, there's there's certainly a haberdashery that sells uh, uh, all manner of hats uh, and um, you know everything from like wide brimmed to uh, fezes to uh, just uh, kind of the rays. Like just you name it, they have like a, a, you know styles that are all occasions. Basically, is there any wide brimmed hats? Yes, there are definitely some wide brimmed hats. Wide brimmed hats. Walk up to the merchant. 
Uh, my friend, uh, welcome to my uh, emporium. Uh, what kind of hat would you... It looks like you would need something like... I would need to custom cut you some holes for your antenna. Point to the white bird. Oh, yes, that's a good choice. Uh, very fine. Uh, the finest felt uh, and, and, and with a leather brim. And he sort of hands it to you to try on. I hand him a golden coin and take it. Okay. <laughs> oh, but the, the holes for your... your Kind of it is fine. Oh, oh yeah. is this in his head? Or yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh yes. Uh, that was shocking. Uh, but uh, thank you. Um, this is more. Do you need a, uh, uh, a change? Uh, no. Live long. Thank you, sir. Oh, we need more. is hurting your eyes. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. So now you have a wide brimmed hat. I do. Now I. Now you fit the true profile of a uh, yeah. private eye. <laughs> private eye. <laughs> like a duster. Like yeah. a trench coat. Yes. He grows one automatically. <laughs> starts whistling. Yep. Now I need to start smoking. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you know, many cigarettes, yeah. <laughs> All of his weapons, except for his longbow, are hidden. And he has, like, knives. He has this rapier that um, every time it jostles out of its uh, sheath, it glows. And then it settles back in. My only visible weapon is the blade, but I hold it like the damn Senate guards from Star Wars, <laughs> just like poking out of the robes. All right, cool. So you guys are meandering through the Agora at this point, uh, you know, looking at, at some of the other various stalls and, and businesses that are going on. In addition to the, uh, you know, all the, the people doing buying, selling, trading, marketing, that kind of stuff going on here, uh, one thing that catches your eye uh, that's different in this city than in many others uh, is that. Um, uh, there are great beasts that are uh, put to like labor in this city. There are like um, uh, basilisks that are the size of like um, you know greyhound buses that are, will just be lumbering through the street, hauling like a big wagon behind them or something like that. There are um, uh, giant megafauna style oxen that are called oryks, and they are usually the, the type that will they'll, they'll be typically uh, pulling. Uh, huge uh, carts full of like um, goods uh, to and fro. Um, some of them is, it will be used for like public transportation. Like they'll have a whole. Uh, what's the thing um, when like the elephants would have like a, a, a big pal What's it called? A howdah. Yeah. Okay. So like some of these beasts will have like people just like riding on a big platform on their back like that, and then some of them are just yeah yeah like they're tr they're pulling and, and uh, wagons full of things. Um, this is also um, you don't see them often. But the Imperator has a whole, um, and, the, and the College of Mages together, uh, when they work together to go to war in any type, they have giant war wagons full of um, uh, wizards who will be pulled by some of these great beasts into war and battle as well. So this is kind of a common part of the course here. Cutting across There's the street, walking in between legs. Absolutely no reason. Yep. How hard is it to spook one of those things? Uh, pretty hard, generally. Especially, like, the Auruchs are just, like, they're giant moo cows, basically. Like, you might, okay. if you could tip one over, that might be a problem, but you'd have to be, like, a giant to do it, sort of a thing. Uh, new character. New character. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we killed all the giants. <laughs> <laughs> Kept tapping our fucking cats. Mm -hmm. so. There are some beasts that are usually not tameable, that are out in the wildlands around the, not in the city, but like out in the, uh, the, the wilderness um, of the Pragian Empire, uh, like great purple worms or things like that. Those would be, you know, what you'd have to look out for. But uh, yes. these are more tame <laughs> kind of lesser <laughs> creatures that yeah. aren't a danger to people, generally speaking. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, the question, do you guys know where the Jewel Theater is? You can either make a history check to see if you happen to know, or you can uh, question somebody to find out. <laughs> what a large animal! Watch out! <laughs> <laughs> I would like to speak to you. <laughs> they, don't like, they don't like touching. I uh, see. When's a dirty twenty? Okay, nice. mine's that a ten. One. A ten. Okay. Um, Scrimp knows his way. Yeah, Scrimp. Um, so uh, in. The uh, uh, northwestern quadrant, which is more of a noble, uh, noble residences and that kind of thing. They have uh, the Jewel Theater is a relatively new enterprise, but it's a an attempt to um, uh, have sort of high society concerts, operas, uh, plays, that sort of thing. 
uh, just popped up here in the last year or so, um, and uh, that's seems you, you've heard of it. Uh, you haven't gone to, to a play there or anything like that, as far as you, you know, uh, are concerned that kind of things. Like you said, you're not from that yeah. that stratus of society, yeah, but uh, for me. You, you pay attention to the businesses that are popping up around. So mm-hmm. you've heard of it before. Yeah, yeah. So I just tell them where it's at and yeah. just like kind of guide the way. I don't want to walk that far. Let's get an RX. All right. Yeah. So you guys, uh, one of one of the RX uh, starts to like kind of meander by, and you're just expected to sort of. They have like this like a uh, rope ladder that sort of hangs down from. Is it a palanquin? Is, is that another name for it? Yeah, that's yeah. right. So like uh, like you're just expected to like jump onto the rope ladder as it sort of wanders by, and then climb up to the palanquin, basically. Um, hold on. How high is the RX? Uh, it probably goes up about fifteen feet high. I'm just going to look at you two, and I think I do it on you first. Um, you're holding onto your yeah. uh, Mark II, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to move you just, uh, onto the. Oh, <laughs> I was like, whoa! <laughs> I was like, oh, see, Mark II, when we get there, this will be what we can do. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> and I, Jedi Grasshopper. Do you need to make another con check for that? Uh, oh, hold, hold your, uh, 13, your list down? 12? Barely. Barely hold it down. <laughs> yep. I just like rub your back. It's like, That's all right. That's all right. We got it. We got it. Yeah. Power through. Okay. Mind so, your business, people. <laughs> <laughs> A few people, yeah, we're kind of staring and then just go on. <laughs> oh, wizards! <laughs> <laughs> How much is the fee? Uh, it's a uh, five silver. Yeah. Do they I'll just like spark and kick you off the top if you can't? Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you! Yeah. <laughs> no ticket. <laughs> <laughs> So this uh, beast meanders through the wide lane uh, city streets. You pass uh, by the um, uh, the sort of like uh, ramshackle buildings of the neighborhood you guys are from and come into uh, progressively nicer and nicer homes. Eventually you start getting into these noble estates. Uh, many of these estates are topped with the um, sort of signature golden domes that is the city is known for. Um, the the uh, Hagia uh, Kretora. Is, has the greatest of these giant golden domes atop it, of course, uh, but it's sort of been copied elsewhere um, um, around the city. And sure enough, as you come t- up to the Jewel Theater, uh, they have also gotten a, gold, a golden dome, but they have spiced theirs up with um, uh, the, uh, instead of sort of the cream-colored buildings that, that form the base of most of these buildings, they actually have a sort of aquamarine color scheme to yep. their uh, building that makes it a little more fancy-looking mm-hmm. as you Do you know where we're supposed to meet right here? Uh, you uh, come into the lobby, and there's just a uh, there's a like a uh, like a guy. Um, uh, he's at the ticket booth, but the ticket booth isn't really open yet. He's actually just kind of straightening up like cards um, and placards and that kind of setting like signs into these little uh, frames that that show the different plays and operas that will be coming up in the next few days. Basically, uh, the one he's putting up right now is that uh, tonight um, there will be a talent show. Excuse me. Oh, uh, yes, sir. How can I help you? Uh, do you know if um, a lady Ascari has uh, walked in yet? Oh yes, uh, Lady Ascari. She uh, she showed up earlier this morning. They're holding auditions for the talent show in the theater. Actually, uh, you can go right on in um, if you're expected. Uh, yes. Thank you. Oh, of course. Yes. Is murder considered a talent? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to apply. <laughs> <laughs> in ways, <laughs> way to meet him. What is this mysterious man? <laughs> so you come into the uh, auditorium. <laughs> yep, you come into the auditorium. On the stage is like a juggler. Uh, he's just like he's st- he's starting with like uh, balls, but then he like press up pro- pro- progressively goes to like knives and then hatchets. And like then he's like you know then they're flaming hatchets and then uh, the uh, the whole time 
there's like a group of like uh, two or three. There's three uh, individuals sitting at the very kind of front rows um, watching all this, and uh, it's a daring uh, show for sure. But he, he wraps up barely like the last catch that he does you you, you almost hear him like under his breath go Ow, you know <laughs> <laughs> but then he like makes Chris a show of like <laughs> but he, yeah he sticks it and then they all kind of like quietly clap and uh, you see a, a woman down at the front say um, yes we'll let you know darling uh, please um, uh, just uh, uh, give you give your information to the to the man in the backstage thank you and uh, the juggler walk, walks off the stage uh, who, who do we have next um, uh, uh, and so um, that you, there's a little break uh, as these three are sort of like conferring about like the juggler. It, should they put him on stage? Is that is this okay? You know that kind of thing. Um, and you have a little time to go interrupt if you want. Walk forward, sit down, take off my hat, my new hat, Lady of Scari. Oh yes. Um, are you uh, investigator Hearth? Yes, yes. Um, and she stands up and says, "I'm, I'm sorry, my friends. Um, I will have to." Uh, if you would just continue on without me, I will be right back. And uh, please, uh, this way. And she, she t- takes you out of the, um, the main auditorium and uh, leads you up to the uh, balcony. And just sort of, they, uh, you guys can all sit in a balcony where nobody, you're out of your shop for everybody. She says, oh, thank you for coming so quickly. Uh, I apologize. Um, I am uh, on uh, the, uh, the board here at the Jewel Theater. Uh, we made a large donation to help open it, my husband and I. Um, we um, are great patrons of the arts, and so um, I just, uh, 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 as such, one of my duties is to help them with these um, occasional auditions. Of course. Now, Lady Ascari, your letter sounded fairly urgent. Um, yes. Is there anything I can help you with? Yes, actually, um, it's about my sister. Um, uh, my name, uh, by the way, Yulia uh, Ascari. I don't know if you've heard of me, as I said. Uh, we're a fairly well-known uh, family here. In, uh, in town, but my sister uh, is Yara, and um, you may not have heard of her, I'm afraid. Um, well, she's a little bit of a black sheep, but I love her dearly, and I, I have con- some concerns about her. Um, Yulara was her name? Yara. Yara. I-A-R-A. And her name is Yulia, I-U-L-I-A. Okay. Um, she says, my, so my sister um, was a, a promising young uh, wizard, and she w- uh, joined the, uh, the college, the uh, collegium. You're familiar, of course, of with course. the spires. Um, and a uh, very promising conjurer um, uh, at an early age. And she, all she ever wanted to do was to be a wizard. Um, unfortunately, she was also somewhat, um, had a fragile personality, you might say. Um, she was very shy. Um, she did not handle bullying well. Um, I tried so hard to protect her from those sorts of things in life. Um, but you know, children can be cruel. Even growing up, adults can be cruel, to be honest. And something in her when she was at the college just broke, I'm afraid to say. Um, you're aware of what happens to mages who cannot handle their studies. I am familiar with the rumors of the asylum. Yes, um, yes, the, the centor- sanatorium, um, uh, the sanctum, as it's called. Um, I, uh, I hate to say it, but I thought it would just be best for her to try and get some help. Otherwise, they were, they were talking about imprisonment or worse. Um, you know, y- yelling her, her mind, so that she could not think anymore. I thought this was the, the most humane thing, was to, to take her there and hope that she could receive some, some treatment to get better. I, but I think I made a terrible mistake. They, they treat the people there often. Um, but moreover, there's been um, a, a, a development uh, at the uh, Sanctum as well, here recently. Um, in the last week or so, apparently a group of a very s- uh, small group of um, inmates, I guess you would call them, I don't know what else to, to refer to them as, um, uh, have been disappearing every single night from the sanctum. Nobody knows how they're getting out. All they know is that the first night they disappeared, nobody knew what was going on. They just four inmates had disappeared, and my sister was one. Fortunately, 
Within a day, they had all been returned to this. They had been found and returned. Then the very next night, they disappeared again. When they, the next morning, they found them in the exact same places that they had disappeared before. There they had reappeared before, I should say. Um, this has happened every night since then. Nobody can tell me what's going on, why this is happening. Um, the uh, warden, um, I've tried to ma arrange a meeting with him, but he says he's too busy to meet with me. I have a, 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 um, um, a barrister, a, a advocate, uh, who I pay on my behalf. Uh, his name is... Um, Marius Vitalis, a halfling gentleman. Um, I've asked him to go and speak with the warden and investigate. Um, he says it's, that's not really his expertise, but he suggested that he's, uh, he's heard of your organization, and he suggested that you um, perhaps could help. Well, this is certainly within our, our realm of expertise. Yeah. Uh, this will be... Um, very rarely do we get mixed up with um, mage business, but it has happened before in the past. Um, I would be ever so grateful. I love my sister so dearly. Of course, and we want to make sure that she has the best treatment possible. And if these, um, if these events continue to escalate, in which she is continuing to, she and these companions are continuing to escape from the um, from the sanctum, we want to be able to make sure that she is not prosecuted. Yes, of course, yes. Tell me, is there any other information that you can give me regarding... I'm also going to incite her, just to get yep. a read on her. Go for it. Mm, this paper. This paper? Yeah. Paper. <laughs> but... Gets it. 22. 22. Um, she seems um, definitely... She seems very truthful about her care, uh, how much she cares for her sister. Gotcha. She also seems very distracted um, about uh, that, that she sh probably sh should have more details, but um, she's so busy with her, maybe it's, maybe it's work, maybe it's uh, uh, just the pressures of being a noble family, maybe it's that she needs to distance herself from her sister for, for political reasons or something, but she, she, it's, it's like a little weird that she didn't have like a little more detail about some of these things. She does say, uh, after you kind of ask about that, she says, well, I thought you might meet with um, Marius, my, my advocate. Uh, he has a little more information on um, some of the... the sp he, he at least has gotten some specifics. Uh, one thing I do know is that she's apparently been reappearing um, whenever she show, shows back up in the morning. She's always at the, uh, um, the Eastern Observatory of the Spire of Conjuration. So she doesn't pop back up in the sanctorum. She just right. She just shows up at this uh, at that at this observatory. It's like a it's like a overlook to, to see the city sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's it's strange. The the sanctum is in one of the spires uh, of the the college. It's actually in the spire of necromancy, if you can believe it or not. Um, uh, so it's a few towers over. Um, so she's, I don't know if she's not leaving the campus grounds or if any of these people are. I do, yeah, I shouldn't speak out of head. If you could speak to Marius more about it, he could have some more information for you. Of where, course. Where might we find this Marius? Yes, he has <coughs> an office on uh, Church Street, um, if you will, just uh, over in the Temple District, of course. And so she hands you the uh, exact address on the slip of paper. No. What are you hoping to get out of our services? Are you hoping for information about these disappearances? Do you want the safety of your sister to be guaranteed within our services? I, I want to understand to the fullest of what you are expecting of us. Yes. Um, I, first and foremost, the safety of my sister. Of course. Secondly, uh, I would love to understand what's going on, why this is happening, so that it can stop. Mm -hmm. um, she needs to get treatment. I, I imagine this is not helping that treatment. Um, uh, uh, and then third, I don't know if there's a way that you can find out. Perhaps she's being, perhaps this whole thing, she's being magically compelled or something. Um, that's just a thought I had. Perhaps it, it would explain her, her whole 
Ish, I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I, she starts to like well up a little bit and get emotional. It's I, perfectly. I put my hand on yeah. on the top of her hand. It's perfectly fine to feel these emotions. We will try to do our best to ensure that the safety of your sister is guaranteed, along with the continued benefit benefit of her well being. We're going to find out what's going on, and of course, because you've come to a private contractor, we are not beholden by censorship laws, so all information that we can find, we will share with you. That would be wonderful. I know the uh, the laws in, on the Codex say that technically they can do whatever they want to mages who are a danger to people. So, you know, as I said, I thought this was the best scenario in many ways. Of um, course. Uh, is 500 gold enough? I, I can pay more if, if it's a uh, problem of money. I believe that the current allotment of funds is suitable for right now. Obviously, this is an investigation, so um, things may come up. We will keep in contact with you very frequently. Um, for right now, the 250 up front and 250 upon completion is the standard rate. I believe that it would be fair. Um, of course, should... Is also the per diem... Yes, the per diem. Oh, yes, yes, the, of course. But all of that will be finalized. And, of course, we don't want to try and take advantage of you and your emotional instability regarding your sister's events. We are going to try and make sure that all of this gets squared away, both right by the law and right by you. Will a wizard's token suffice for now? Do you know what a wizard's token is? Uh, make a um, arcana check. I do that, too. Yep. Yahtzee. Hey, 12. Ugh. Wizard shit is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stupid. Twelve. It's not a hard check, so I think a twelve you would at least have heard of the concept. Okay. Uh, yeah. And you can. I just got a twelve. Yeah. Arcana. Yeah, I'll, I'll try an arcana. Okay. I'm not even. I'm not from this country. Well, yeah. how long? <laughs> something. <laughs> Apparently, you've been in this city a lot longer than we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's, I have a nineteen intelligence and I should yeah. remember stuff better. Um. I did give you that book. Maybe you just consumed the just entire I literature. Just, yeah. Flip through it. Done. Yeah. Um, but that's a 14. Okay, so all of you would have heard of the, uh, the concept, at least. So a wizard's token is basically a magical uh, coin, basic, that you can... Um, uh, the way it works is the last person who touched it can summon it. So basically what the, uh, people can do who, who use these tokens is put it in the bank and then uh, at different denominations, and then when they're ready to make a payment to somebody, they can just summon it and then hand it to the next person, and then they own it. Uh, they're not accepted everywhere because um, it's a very subjective value sort of a thing. It's not the, the actual cr- you know gold crowns that is the coin of the realm, uh, but it's a convenient way for especially the nobles and people in the uh, people in the, the collegium really love these things, uh, basically. But they're just sort of like magic items that serve as almost like checks, gotcha. uh, uh, and then you can like cash them in for the, the actual amount of gold coins, supposedly. Uh, yes, this will work for me. Thank you. Yes. So she takes a little motion and, and says a uh, password under her breath and then like, hands it to you. Take and, it. Yep. Put it away. All right. So um, how frequently would you like um, reports on this investigation? We can give them when we find things out or we can try to give them at a certain date, certain time span. Of course, it is very likely that we may go periods of time without learning anything. Yes, I understood. Um, Whenever you have more information that you feel is, is worthy of sharing to me, but perhaps every uh, two days or so at least, I would be most appreciative, if possible. If we can't uh, meet you personally, uh, we will send you a, uh, a message. Excellent. Um, you can either, I will be either here at the theater, or I will give, have Marius give you my, uh, you can of course go to Marius uh, and give him any reports. Um, I trust him implicitly. Uh, or, and he can give you my, my personal estate's address. Wonderful. And of course, I say this to all my clients, we do not work for the guard. We do not, we are not beholden by the laws of the enforcers of the city. We will try to find out as much as we can. And we hope for the best. Thank you so much. And she clasps your hand, like with both hands, kind of sort of thing, and says, uh, and thank you, sir. Um, I didn't catch that. Scrimp. Scrimp and crappa. Thank you so much, Scrimp. She kind of leans down to you. Well, I guess, are you still on top of your... your no, no, I've, I've, yeah. I, I've definitely disembarked yeah, from okay. work, too. So she helps. She, like, bends down to sort of do the same. I'm uh, just like, <laughs> shake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, is this your... Uh, as well? Yes, they're helping with the investigation. This mm-hmm. is, uh, Pop. Thank you, Pop. It is a pleasure, most beautiful and strong lady. 
Oh, I am Puck of Rog. How interesting. Is that a madness? Is it a magic? No. It is a gift. It's a fine gift. Thank you so much. Um, of course, we'll be in contact. Yes, I will. I must go back down to uh, to my duties. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Yes, of course. Don't don't put that juggler on the card. The what? Don't put the juggler on the card. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, yes, he seems a. Uh, oh well, come on! He was bit, trying hard. A bit risky. Oh <laughs> and Chris has to make a new character. <laughs> <laughs> Dreams dash. He turns to a life of crime. <laughs> That was my end in the party. I was going to be the juggler that they hired. <laughs> Krusty <Yeah>. jugglers. <laughs> Krusty <laughs> jugglers. <laughs> yeah. All right, so what's your next move? Balls moment? deep in jugglers. I guess we got to go find this Marius. Let's person. go find this Marius. Okay. So you head over to Marius' uh, office. Um, it is not very far. You can actually just walk this pretty easily. Uh, less than five minutes. Uh, you find his office is on the uh, first floor of sort of a multi-level um, sort of building that's nondescript. Um, he is inside. Uh, he does have an assistant who sort of handles his appointments, but they let you right through because they find out you know pretty quickly who you are. Uh, you come in, sit down. Uh, he's sort of facing away from you, looking outside of his window when you come in. Uh, so you just sort of see the back of his head as a silhouette at first uh, until... Um, uh, you sit down, and he turns around. And just a, actually, a very handsome-looking halfling fellow. Uh, uh, and um, uh, this, it's a normal-sized room where he, he has most of his clients. Are clients. Uh, but he has to sort of like hop up on a higher stool to sort of like. But it gives him the impression that he's on your level when, when you guys talk to him. Gotcha. But he, he uh, before he does so, he turns around uh, and says, uh, um, "Can I get you a gentleman a drink? Actually, before we uh, get started." Uh, water for me, please. Of course. Oh, uh, yeah, w- water be good, please. Um, and you? Water. Uh, three waters, and I hope you don't mind if I have a bourbon. That's fine. All right. No, a bourbon, I guess, wouldn't exist, but yeah, a whiskey or something what? like that. Enjoy uh, your weak poison. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your weak poison. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, he pours, uh, out, you know, he has this carafe of water, which he pours into some like uh, like goblets and hands them to each of you. And then, yeah, he takes a little shot of, of whiskey and starts sipping it. Um, like a butterfly tongue that comes out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, in contrast to y'all, to your office, uh, it's very well kept, very clean. Um, the the desk is immaculate. Uh, there's, um, you know, uh, he's got. Um, uh, pictures, uh, paintings on the walls to sort of put you at ease, nice wallpaper, uh, very professional looking office. Um, but, um, and he's very well dressed, uh, in sort of like a, um, the equivalent of a, th- whatever a three piece suit would be in this, uh, you know, era's clothing. You got a, um, a fluffy shirt. Yeah, a nice fluffy shirt, uh, and, uh, some, 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 uh, boots that go up to the knee and trousers and that kind of thing. Dressed like Beethoven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. And, uh, um, he says, uh, gentlemen, um, uh, I guess you're here uh, talk, to talk about Yara. Uh, here's the first thing I have for you. Um, uh, these are the addresses of the four locations that the four individuals keep returning to every day when uh, they come uh, back in the morning. Um, you can take a look and see if there's anything here. I don't really recognize the other three. Uh, of course, the final one on, on here is where... Uh, Yara is showing back up at the Collegium uh, Observatory. Uh, and uh, why don't you go ahead and make a, um, a history check for me, Scrimp. Okay. History. That's a 15. 15. That, uh, the, um, just, the Jester Street... Mm-hmm. Uh, right at the top. Yep, that sounds really familiar to you. This, this one, this feels real familiar. And you start thinking about it. Jester Street. Jester Street. Why do I know Jester Street? The scrapyard. The scrapyard's on Jester Street. The one. Oh. I used to. I used to meet up with my brother here at this scrapyard. He would, uh, he would come out, he'd show me how to, he's a, he was a wizard. Uh, 
he was always smarter than I was. He could always, you know, manipulate the weave way better than I could. But he would help me, you know, uh, infuse magic into like mundane things. As I always used to say, that's what magic is for, is for making the mundane a little more exciting. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what I do, and that's what we do. Uh, Those are right. bad memories? I know, mean, good memories, but like, it's bad in the sense that like, I remember my brother went to the college, but like he just straight disappeared. No one told, no one gave us any little warnings about sensitive people or whatever. Like I don't know for we we would ask me, my pops, my ma. We would ask you know what happened to what happened to Snark, and they you know just kind of stonewalled us because we're goblins, you know. Like I mean, yeah, there's a cosmopolitan area, but like. When you leave goblinoid society, you know, you lose a lot of the tribalism, you lose a lot of the, the community that you had, and so you're just kind of like out there, and so the family becomes that much more important. And, uh, no, they never, they never gave us a straight answer, and uh, we still don't know where he's at, or if he's alive or dead. How are all of these locations linked together? There are... I mean, that was a scrapyard. This is, this, do, do we know? We should have talked to her if that... I mean, she said, it sounded like she didn't know about that observatory me, having any meaning for her. Um, Marius. Yes. Uh, these groups of people, that are, this group of people that keep disappearing, uh, there are four of them? Yes. And they all appear within these own plots. Yes, that's where they reappear every morning on the dot. Do we know um, the names of the other three who keep reappearing at this? I do not have the information. I thought we might travel over to the uh, sanctum together after, if you have time. After we can this. do that. We're make, we would make our way to the sanctum. Um, I could uh, I could take you there, and I actually have some business there of my own. Um, I take on pro bono clients every now and then, um, just trying to uh, uh, help the the city out with because uh, not everybody can afford a, a barrister. That's know. good. At you. Uh, no, I appreciate it, but it's. Um, uh, I figure it's good to keep on good terms with them also, relationships, that sort of thing. Um, but anyway, there's been a very recent um, uh, in, inmate at the Sanctum, uh, a wizard or uh, some sort of magic user, I guess, um, a half-orc, uh, who uh, keeps claiming he's innocent of the charges. Um, it sounds like he hasn't been given his due process, and I, uh, uh, it's come across my desk, so I wanted to in- investigate that. This um, inmate might know something. You guys... M- might help to have you there as backup as well on that case. Of course. Well, we need to make our way to the college GM regardless to see if we can squeeze any information out of the clerks. However, I don't feel like that's going to be necessarily something easily gained. Um, it might help if I'm there because once again, people see a, uh, an authority figure of the law. They sometimes, you know, get a little nervous. And of course. Yeah, it's, a, it's sort of an a authority thing. We can make our way to the Collegium. Um, any information that you are wanting to dispose of right now onto us um, before we make our way out there? I don't think I have any more than... Uh, pr- I mean, it sounds like uh, Lady um, Yulia uh, explained the thing, things to you pretty well. I will say that um, when she says that uh, Lady... Uh, when she says that Lady Yara is fragile or, you know, that she just had this, these fragility issues, she's putting it lightly out of love uh, for her sister, I believe. Um, I would put it more that she is a uh, tad more than fragile. She's, uh, at the, the most kind thing I could say is, 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 is eccentric, but um, she's, um, she honestly does have problems. She's too, she can't um, be around people. They scare her too much. Um, she she can't fit in, in in society because of these fears. Um, she's a darling person, a, a great heart, um, beautiful uh, on the inside um, as a person, but uh, she she could never function in society the way she is now. Um, she wasn't always that way, but something in the college triggered this. From my understanding of what talking with um, uh, with Lady uh, Evelia. Um, it definitely seems like there was some sort of bullying, or um, yes, I think that's true. Would she ever be the type to lash out at someone if they were bullying her? I cannot imagine that at all. She would probably try to withhold it within. Do you think that's not healthy? Of course, but um, she would never want to hurt anyone. 
do we know if any of these sure. confrontations uh, were expanded upon outside of verbal? If there are any incident reports made with the Collegium? Unfortunately, um, if there were any such things, I could never get my hands on them. They always claimed it was just a teasing, a verbal, like you say, verbal abuse, which can be punishing, you know, punishing on a person's It can be mind. very punishing, but I don't... It would have to be some hell of verbal abuse for someone to be yes. sent to the Sanctorum. Uh, you, I, I don't think I need to tell you how, how um, things at this spires work. They, they, it has a reputation. Yes, no, they, they like... Elaborate. Uh, yes, of course. You're probably not as familiar... Oh, that's interesting. Uh, probably not <laughs> as uh, familiar <laughs> with um, uh, how, how that works, but the, the uh, college um, is run by the uh, Society of Arcanum. Um, they are equal in power in some ways to the Imperator himself, uh, although, of course, they would never say it out loud. <laughs> but the truth is they have the power, uh, magically speaking, to um, to to be equals with the Imperator from a sim simple power level. Um, so they have a great deal of political clout. Um, anything that might threaten their power structure, they like to handle internally. They do not like their secrets to get out to the public. Um, anything that might be embarrassing to them, that might put them in a negative light, generally does not come to light unless someone outside finds out about it. Does that make sense to you? It is unfortunate. It is unfortunate. And so uh, what I'm saying, I suppose, is that if something like that happened, I could easily see where they would not tell a lawyer such as myself about it uh, if they could keep it under wraps. Well, it looks like we're going to be up to our chest in dirt, so we'll have to be careful. We wish to bury ourselves. It's a... Dirt, euphemism. it's a euphemism. Dirt as in secrets. Are uh, you ready to uh, head over? We can walk and talk, of course. Of course. Um, Scrimp Lake. I am interested. It's like the hip of Mark II. And, like mm -hmm. a, and then like a, uh, a, what's it called? Some thieves tools pop out and he just like pockets them and keeps them ready and then pushes the little compartment back into the spot. Uh, are you doing that like in public or do you want to make a slight of hand? I'm doing it in the office. I'm okay. just doing it like yeah, obviously in the fine. office. Just like okay, cool. I'm interested in speaking with this half-orc. Yes, yes. Uh, um, I believe his name is Grimtusk uh, is what I got across my desk. Interesting name, but um, uh, yes, he's being accused of a uh, robbery at the college. Um, and he claims he has an alibi, so I want to, I want to hear his side of the story. Of course. <coughs> We can go speak with him, and anyone who's willing to um, spill secrets about the inside of the college. That's true. Or the sanctum itself. Or the sanctum itself. Yeah. Well, no time like the present. Right. So um, he uh, tells his assistant to go ahead and lock up for lunch hour, uh, and then uh, he escorts you uh, towards the college. So you guys have to head all the way. Um, you see this sort of area that's sort of fenced in up the very northern, a little sliver that has a big wall around it. And each one of those little kind of circular dots is a tower, one of those 200-foot-tall spires. You notice that they're all color-coded. Um, if you want to, you can make a uh, history check to sort of like uh, understand the, uh, the meaning behind the colors. Ten. Fifteen. Okay. 21. Yo. So, um, it's one of the, you, you were interested in, it's one of the very first things you saw when you came into the city. Um, I would say that you with your 15 are at least, an, oh, you're, sorry, you with your 15. Mm -hmm. uh, and th the fact that your brother was a mm -hmm. student there, uh, you knew at least vaguely um, some of the things about these towers. You know that each color is for one of the different schools of magic, and they're color-coded. Their students wear um, outfits that are the same color, right? So you can tell a conjurer apart from an abjurer, for example. Okay. By, they wear these kind of, like, um, overcoats uh, uh, that are, um, like, a, the same color of their tower. Okay. Um, and so, for example, um, uh, and every tower also, you would know, um, because once again, you were just like, oh, well, tell me all about these towers when you first got here. Um, each tower also has like a nickname that when you when the wizards are talking about it amongst themselves, they don't call it like the Tower of Conjuration or the Spire of Conjuration. Uh, they call it uh, Wellspring, for example. The Wellspring. Uh, yes, that's the name of that tower is Wellspring, for example. Gotcha. Or like the Tower of Enchantment is called Witchway, uh, uh, and so they each have like their own different. Um, it's kind of like jargon that only the students or people who are in them know sort of 
know about these towers. Gotcha. People who are outside of the college will just say, you know, the spire of enchantment. And uh, uh, what spire relates to which color? Or what college relates yeah. to? Yeah. So if you want, I can go through these because uh, the yes, 21 please. would certainly know. Um, so abjuration is called the firmament, and that's gold. Conjuration is called wellspring, and it's blue. Divination is called scry pillar, and it's pearl. Enchantment is called witch way, and it's rose. Evocation is called Spillgate, and it's red. Illusion is known as Mind Spire, and it's cyan. Necromancy is called Doom Keep, and it's black. They really got to work on their. Energy. I know. Like it's always yeah. I know. And the, the worst part and everything, of course. Yeah. And the, the Doom Keep. We'll get into the College of Necromancy more later, but uh, yeah, they they need a PR person. <laughs> uh, and then finally, Transmutation is known as Imperia, and it's green. He wouldn't think you're the baddies. Don't put skulls in there. Just saying. <laughs> so to get to oh, the uh, the gates that lead into the Collegium, you have to pass by the uh, the arena, also known as the Ippodroma. Uh, it is a uh, huge um, coliseum style arena where they hold gladiator fights, uh, chariot races, all manner of games, that sort of thing. No, nothing going on there today, so it's empty. Uh, but um, the they can so the big sort of big, there's a big sandy. Uh, 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 area even around the, uh, the the arena, and when it's a, like a day of an event, they will just have all manner of more, even more market stalls, even more people, mm -hmm. just like you know, um, uh, getting ready for the events, that kind of thing. So um, right now it's quiet. And you pass over that, uh, and then head into the gate uh, of the western side of the wall that leads into the Collegium. Uh, they do, of course, um, they want to make sure uh, they're not just letting anybody in, uh, but um, fortunately for you, uh, Marius has credentials that he flashes and lets you guys uh, straight through, and then he takes you to Doom, uh, Doom Keep itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, the funny thing is, Doom Keep, while it is a slick, black-looking, Sauron kind of looking tower, Doom. just because the architecture was built long ago, um... As you come inside its doors, you find a very interesting uh, change of pace once you enter the inside. Uh, when you come inside, everything is a gleaming crystal white color on the inside. It's nice mauve. Yeah. Yes. Well, what it is, is it's, it's ex extremely, extremely sanitary. Everything is completely devoid of uh, character or... Um, uh, it's it's like what's the in Andor? Do you guys all watch Andor? The mm -hmm. the inside of that prison, you know, kind yeah. of thing. Okay. Like that's the style uh, motif they're going for inside here. If I get dragged away in a fucking straight jacket, <laughs> <I'm gonna be laughs> no, this is giving Gideon the ninth vibes. Did you guys? Uh, so if you so if you'd like to make <laughs> Gideon the ninth, uh, fuck yeah. Either Arcana or religion. Badass. Actually, I think oh, Arcana or, or history check on this one you can, uh, as you kind of enter to understand the the the, 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 the intricacies of this. Uh, Nineteen on history. Nineteen. I'm gonna okay. roll to see if I could pass if I could care less about the That's fair. of this. Okay. Yeah. Nope, I cannot we just care less. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming. <laughs> <laughs> so this actually makes all the sense in the 22. world. Twenty-two. The twenty-two. Okay. So both of you makes all the sense in the world as you enter inside. The thing is, uh, about a hundred years ago or, or so, the Empire of Pragia uh, was taken over um, from within in a coup d'état by a death cult. Uh, a cult of necromancers and evil undead hey, worshippers. No, they don't like that word anymore. I know. They're rebranding. <laughs> <laughs> Post-mortem um, enthusiasts. <laughs> and, by, and then they waged war upon, like, uh, Zarthage and, and all the other lands to the south of Mishdori. Um, mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So, then they were soundly defeated. Um, by the the coming, you know, not, it would take a lot to bring like Zarthage and Nistori and Urges together for anything, but this death cult streaming in from the north was certainly a thing that would do it, right? So they got their butt kicked. They got uh, they were um, thrown out of Pregia, and the Imperator came back in to become the new ruler, as as it had been before the cult took over. Um, and since then. The, in order to keep even to even have a college of necromancy, which has just been tradition for the whole time they've had the college, they've had to be very very careful about the, like y the image is still there like they can't seem to escape that. But what they do is they overcompensate with we are just 
there's nothing going on here. We are completely sanitary. We make no, we don't have any torture devices here. See, you know, we don't, we don't, we aren't animating any zombies. Do you see any zombies here? Kind of like they're, they're overcompensating completely to the other direction, sort of basically. They're trying to keep things as clinical and pristine as possible um, on the inside. I dig it. I'm spinning everywhere, by yeah. the way, just to <laughs> fucking everything up. Yeah. So, um... The constant prestidigitation curse <laughs> snatches the spit out of the air. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Give me that shit. <laughs> it is. Very clean. Uh, the, um, the Tower of Necromancy has a bad reputation, and they're trying to, um, overcompensate for it. It's a little too clean, you know? I mean, I understand it's the study of the passage between life and death. As a follower of the uh, Conspiracy Keeper myself, it's, uh... It's interesting, but um, they're definitely trying way too hard. Like it's unsettling. It like, is unsettling. Like, what it's also incredibly bright. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just like, pull your brim down a little yeah. bit more. <laughs> so they have these um, portals set up in the back of sort of the opening entry area. Uh, the portals go to like different floors, of the, so you don't have to like hike up stairs or that kind of thing on these 200 foot tall spires. Um, Marius knows exactly where to go, which portal to take. Um, he, as he's like leading you towards that portal, he sort of is explaining to you off the side. He says, "So um, the uh, the sanctum is actually a rather large portion of this tower. Uh, it's made up of five floors of the, the tower itself. Uh, it holds it can hold up to five hundred inmates if necessary. I believe they're somewhere on the order of about three hundred right now. So they're not at capacity, but this is a huge number of people." Uh, with extremely magical powers, you know, powerful people that are somewhat unhinged, supposedly. You can imagine that it's um, it's quite a sight when we, when we get up there, but you'll see. Are we'll there protections in place so they don't, like, yes. magic crash there out of is, us? Uh, there is a, a general magic dampening uh, aura on, on all five floors that, that is very difficult to overcome. It's not impossible, but very difficult. Which makes so it all the stranger that these four individuals keep disappearing and yes. reappearing. Yeah, I mean, and then there that. are certain cells which are completely anti-magic. They've uh, that is a very costly enchantment, so they can't put it everywhere, but only on. They have a. I, I've been told it's a, a very minimal number of cells where they have completely anti-magic uh, protections. No magic whatsoever could ever get through theirs. Well, let's hope this grim tusk isn't stuck in one of those. Um, Agree. Um, so he leads you through the portals. When I'm just in a dumpster. Yep. This should be a dumpster. When you come up through the, uh, come out the other side of the portal to the sanctum, they don't keep up the appearances everywhere in the tower. In the tower, because when you get to this part of the, uh, when you get to the actual like front area of the sanctum, um, it's a pretty typical like lobby of a uh, what you might think of like as a, sort of a old medical facility or horse asylum. It's very oak, you know, uh, dark woods, kind of like like the decor we have here in our room, uh, uh, with a um, little dingy on the dingy side because it's old. It's like the old one, of the older part of the parts of the tower that it, they haven't redecorated. Uh, they you come inside and there's um, immediately you know there's just like waiting chairs and then there's like a little stall where there's a staff uh, member waiting to admit people, um, and um, the uh, there's a nurse behind the counter and she goes. Um, yes, can I help you? And uh, Marius goes, uh, yes, I'm here to see, uh, uh, actually, I, I wanted to speak to the warden if possible, but I'm also here to see a client of mine. His name is uh, Grim Tusk. Um, and, well, the warden is uh, indisposed at the moment, but I could uh, put you in a cell with Mr. Uh, Grim Tusk uh, right now if you'd like. Um, he goes, yes, I, I'd appreciate that. Um, so they lead you deeper into the, into the, uh, uh, the uh, by the way, Everybody keeps calling it the Sanctum or the Santorum because they've been very careful to this point. Most people know this area as the Belfry. It's just called the Belfry to most ordinary folks. So we're, that's how I'm going to refer to it from now on. Um, you get in further into the Belfry, and uh, she leads you into sort of just a small office, which is just like a, a um, seems to be just like a generic conference room style office with a table and a bunch of chairs around it. And you see a half work sitting there. Uh, and uh, and seated at a table, and then there's chairs for you guys to all sit around at the table. Yes. How, how is Mark II holding up with these magic dampeners? Around? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think when you get onto the, when you come out of the portal, and he's fine when you're in the lobby, 
the moment that you guys, um, actually, I think the nurse, uh, when she sees you coming in with this automaton, she goes, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, I have a couple of procedures uh, for you all. First off, I, you can't take your automaton any further than this. You'll, you'll need to leave it out here in the lobby. Uh, second off, um, I need to make sure, does anybody here have any paper on them, right, pieces of writing? Does anybody have anything on a, uh, written down on a piece of paper at all? Marius says, um, oh, yes, of course. And so he's kind of, he's done this before, and so he has like a little leather satchel that he opens up, and he pulls out like all these sheaves of paper, and he hands it over to her. Um, uh, she says, thank you, and she puts it inside. Like She doesn't look at it, but she shoves them inside of like a, a metal safe. I pull out my journal and yeah. all of my documents that I keep on myself. Yeah. She goes, I'm, I'm so sorry about this. It's just that people sometimes will try to sneak in runes and spell books and we cannot have that in here. I understand. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll put up like, I just got like a little reporter's pad that I take yeah. notes on and I... Okay. So she takes that inside. And I need to ask <laughs> you, nobody here has any spell components on them or um, anything, uh, wands, rods, stabs, uh, uh, anything, staffs, anything like that? I think like, what's it called? Like some... Uh, smithing tools, and yeah. Like, and I, I hand them like they're my focus. So yeah, oh, thank you. And so she puts them all inside the safe, basically. These will be kept secure for you uh, until you come back out here. Just I like take my bag back off and like hand her like the garbage that is Mark One. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> she puts it in. I just hand her five scrolls. Okay, thank you. You can get on that box if you need. It's a little no, bit no, like a. Uh, you guys are just keep you know, pulling stuff out. You know, she's got the, the safe. How many stuff. guns did you have? <laughs> 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 I have. Yeah. <laughs> five weapons, five. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty stacked. Also, I qualify as a weapon. <laughs> uh, technically, yes. <laughs> All right. Now you come back into the. Uh, now we'll come back into the the, the holding cell with Grimtooth. All right, Grim Tusk. Grim Tusk. I'm sorry, Grim Tusk. Uh, Mr. Grim Tusk. My name is uh, Marius uh, um, Valenti. Uh, uh, I am been. Um, I have been assigned as your advocate in the matter of the robbery. Uh, do you want to give me your statement, please? Okay. So you'll see this six six half orc who is just pure muscle. Like his bicep alone is probably bigger than you are. Mm -hmm. um, his so he has one milky dead eye. Bulging tusks, protruding tusks. Um, his his knuckles say "Grim Tusk" on them, and he just has the word "arson" tattooed on his neck, and just tattoos everywhere. Uh, they say, <laughs> I mean, I don't know why they're holding me here anyway. This is not where they keep spellcasters. Yes, aren't are you not a spellcaster? I was told you had some sort of um, uh, magical. Um, Abilities. Is that not true? I have my gifts. Well, it doesn't have to be wizards per se. They keep uh, sorcerers here, warlocks, um, anyone with um, a modicum of arcane talent may be interred here. So they sent you to spring me? I don't know if spring is the right word. Um, I'm here friends? on a pro bono basis to see if it sounds to me like there might be a case of mistaken identity here. Uh, so I will, like, step around him yeah. and just, like, square up with Eletherius and see the biggest guy. Investigator Hotkeeper. I'm not here for you, but, um... Investigator. Mm-hmm. Private eye. Smell like cheap booze. Insight check. I just want to stare right through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to get insight or intimidation? Insight. Okay. I'm not trying to intimidate. I don't yeah. look intimidating. Okay. 21 on Insight, just looking at you, and you're like, how you're put together. You can make an opposed roll if you'd like. If you're trying uh, to hide if it. If you're trying to hide something. You don't have, what you can do is you can make a roll. I'm not necessarily I looking. I think I necessarily am. Okay, well, you could roll something. It could be either persuasion or deception. You don't have to tell me, and then just. just I'm not looking it. for lies. I'm just like, how he's hold together. Is he like, just trying to like, you know, I'm not trying to see like, did you do it? <laughs> just like, who am, who is the person I'm looking at beneath the skin? Um, just very holy myself. Like, that was a total of a um, 17. Okay. But just very matter of fact about the person I am and the kind of things that I've done. And 
We'll try to size each other up, one up in turn. Quite the crew you have. Yeah, uh, they're here to help me uh, on another matter, but I think they could actually be of aid in your investigation uh, as well. Um, we need to prove somehow that you were not at the scene of this robbery. Uh, do you have an alibi for where you were? I was on a mission from God. I see. Do you have proof of this mission of from God? No, she's very fucking unhelpful about that. I see. It's not necessarily unheard of. Hmm. The gods are... Uh... Not listening? Well, no. The gods are enjoy intervening in matters of mortal life frequently. It is not uncommon for... No, she loves interfering in mortal life. Well... I was living my mortal life. She took me, and now I'm in prison. Well, uh, to be fair... Great it's job, a, by the way. To be fair, it's not a prison. It's a, uh, uh, supposedly an asylum. It's a place to hopefully oh. help you get better. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of laughs. laughs. Mary's is like, that's about the, that's the way I feel about it, too, to be honest, my friend. But uh, if here I we are. Ask, <laughs> who is this god you worship? You would not have heard of her. Oh, uh, one of those. <laughs> She's forgotten about in this day and age until she found me. I'm the only one that can hear her, apparently. Well, congratulations. Great. You're a prophet. I'm a motherfucking chosen one. Mm. Well, it's going to be problematic if she didn't give you like a receipt about where you were on the... Uh, do you know what you're being accused of? <sighs> a shop got robbed. There was some light arson. Naturally, they found me. Yes, but you know what was taken? I don't even know. Like around, around it was a up. magic item shop, and two scrolls were taken, which are apparently quite dangerous in the wrong hands. I don't stumble scrolls. Fair enough. Obviously, you didn't have them on you when you were taken. Um, that doesn't prove anything, unfortunately. Uh, what would help me is if you could just tell me... There's a witness, an eyewitness, who places you at the scene. An eyewitness. Yes. I wasn't there. I, I don't do that anymore. I got religion. That's fair. Um, here. And he starts to spread the documents out in front of the whole table. All you guys. He says, let's take a look. The de details matter in an investigation. Let's take a look at these and see if there's anything we can find uh, that might... Uh, maybe there's a way just that they... just get pro bono case? We're putting on some glasses. <laughs> oh, what just the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like could, of course... Compound I, glasses. <laughs> just like... It's, Millions of X's. Does it, it also have a fake nose on it? <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'll, uh, of course, I, from what I understand, you're being paid a per diem, correct? Uh, yes. but, but if you need a little extra financial incentive, I could provide it. It depends on how difficult this is. If it's just something that is clean as day, then. Yeah. I am simply here to make I have a witness, too. Oh, you do have a witness. I do. Is it your God? Because then I probably don't think that's going to work. What? Is it your God? Because if then I probably don't think it's going to work. Want to chime in anytime now? No. That no, happens. but you're not. Yeah. No, she wouldn't do that. No. She's I being am. especially silent right now because you've you noticed that like, you've really tried a couple of times to cast some of the, the yes, powers but that you've been given and they don't seem to work in here. What's the good of being a chosen one if you can't even use your powers? I know. So who's this uh, alibi you got? A guy named Bracken. Bracken. I was making amends, severing some old ties. I was with him all evening. He's trying to... Not the most trustworthy sort, but... Bracken. 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 Make a history check if you want. 21. 23. Do you want to tell them some anything that might be public knowledge what about Bracken? Um, so so you would you'd probably know that he's a well-known fence. Um, kind of small time crook, you know, small robberies usually. Nothing ever never got to stick on him. You know, he's never usually him attached to. He always works through fronts. So he's never been like formally brought up on any charges, or at least none of those are stuck. So, for all intents and purposes, he is a reputable member of society. Yep, prides himself on that. Really giving member of the community. 
Bracken, a uh, squirrel seam out of his wheelhouse. He's more small time yeah. from what I know. He he works, he occasionally fences stuff. For, uh, and you are with Mr. Bracken. In this Bracken. city, you make money off magic items when you can. That's fair. And you were with Mr. Bracken at this time. We were having a few drinks. Hmm. Why do I feel like there's a, a butt coming here? That's where I was. You can ask him. Uh, any particular location that you were having these drinks at? Any bar? Or was it one of Mr. Bracken's private? The seeping pit. Heard of it? Probably not. Maybe this is the butt. So it sounds like he's a disreputable sort. Are you uh, impugning my honor? No, I would never. But a jury of your peers might. But that right now you're being. Here's the thing. Right now you're being held against your will with no due process. I'm at the very least. You're going to walk out of this tower today with me. If it takes me going to the magistrate's office, getting a writ, and coming back. I will do so. But I want to talk to the warden and see if we maybe we can grease the wheels a little easier. But um, the problem is that eventually they will get the paperwork. We need to prove your innocence before that time. Um, and if a witness, a witness is great, but they will they will of course assassinate his character as much as possible to make it seem like he's lying to protect him. Do you see my problem? Well, his his own record is pretty squeaky clean should be able to hold up. That's fair. But maybe we could, um, maybe I could hold, help me, uh, once again, maybe I could give you a little extra kick in uh, my, my uh, colleagues here to help me out on this. If you could in- help investigate this robbery, we could, cl- we you could clear from? him by oh, finding the actual... Way. Oh, I already have one voice in my head that is really not welcome. It is kind of amusing to watch it happen again and again. It is. I'm getting a lot of joy out of it. Well, if you're willing to pay our standard rate, we are more than welcome to join in this investigation. Pulls up the cloak a little bit, just like obviously it's covered in instead of tattoos, it is actually carved into the carapace, symbols and signatures all across his body, representing what looks like battles, um, words that are written down in the language you do not understand. Unless you speak at the very hand, you see there is a giant rune um, carved deep into the carapace there. Oh, you should have left those outside. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, our standard going fee. As I said, as I see right now, there is a witness in a location that you can put yourself at at the time of the crime, which will give you enough leeway to, like Mr. Marius has said, get you out of here today. It has to be investigated on again. The I'm. I'm here. I'm supposed to be here. Here. In this sanctum? Not in the cell, but I'm supposed to be here. There's a problem, and I have to solve it. There is a young woman being accused of madness currently. That sounds about right. It fits the theme. Well, if we could get another set of eyes on this, I wouldn't complain. (sighs) Very well. Instead of charging you the full standard rate, we can do. Uh, I've been told. Do the the Be- I've been informed the Beth method is not just breaking everyone's knees until somebody talks, though. So I'm a little out of ideas right now. Bit of out of my wheelhouse. Well, currently as it stands, we're making our way through the mired bureaucracy of the Sanctorum. But as mired as it may be, I'd rather drink, make myself unconscious in the seeping pit. That's fair. It is fascinating to watch how ineffective your society is. It is. It makes it so that we can't get ourselves too far into trouble at once. I see. A lot of checks. Mm. But not many balances. All right, gentlemen. Well, what I'm going to go do is have a discussion with the warden about all the uh, laws of the codex he's breaking at this exact moment. Um, In the meantime, perhaps, um, Mr. Grim Tusk, you could show my associates. uh, Grim, Grim. Perhaps you could show my associates around uh, my parts lovely of cell. The, yeah, they're, well, they'll let you in. I'm sure they're letting you in the common area, of course, right? Um, perhaps uh, I could have I could talk to the nurses about this, but they you could perhaps uh, guide my associates or at least around the common areas. They might want to t- t- talk to some folks while they're here. Um, 
uh, get the lay of land, so to speak. See who we're dealing with. Yeah. All right. I'll go have that discussion. Um, Do y'all want to score booze and cigarettes? Cigarettes, maybe. <laughs> well, we need to talk to some people here first. Goodbye, small lawyer. Oh, yes. Uh, goodbye, um, Pock. Is that right? Did I get it right? Okay. Um, and he kind of makes a little uh, gesture and then heads outside. I think at this moment, we're going to end our session for today. Uh, and we'll pick back up next time and uh, we'll see where this all leads. Sweet. Here we go again. Thank you very much.